The New Zealand Expeditionary Forces were sent to New Zealand to fight alongside other troops during World War I and II. New Zealand troops fought generally in the war efforts, short shortening the war. The second ex New Zealand Expeditionary Force played a significant role in the liberation of Riziera di San Saba, Italy's only death camp. It was situated near Trieste. In April 1945, around 20,000 troops from that division spearheaded a move uh, where Yugoslav partisans were fighting. Because of their imminent arrival, San Saba's remaining inmates were released and lived. The Chief of the Army, Major General John Bos Boswell, will address us. And after we have heard from him, we will hear from Gay Stanley, one soldier was Private Na Potiki Tahu Hopkinson of Naitahu. He was in the 28th Māori Battalion, 18 Platoon. He was one of our troops who entered Riziera San Saba death camp. His testimony is retained in this institution. A testimony given to survivor Frida Narav, who is known to so many of us and with us today. The Riziera San Saba camp and its liberation is also the subject of materials the Holocaust Centre of New Zealand developed late last year for the Ministry of Education, complete with teacher resources. Private Hopkinson's daughter, Gay Stanley, accompanied her father to Europe twice before he died, and she is with us today to share her father with us. Uh, Major General Boswell. Kayaku nui, kayaku rahi, kia ora tato katoa. Uh, kia ora, um, Minister, uh, Sir Peter, Your Worship, the Mayor, Deb, I also acknowledge you and your team and uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. You may wonder why the Chief of Army is speaking today at the deeply significant annual remembrance of the Nazi German Holocaust that took place in Europe and North Africa some 75 years ago. It is because the theme for this year's commemoration is resistance. And the New Zealand Army, indeed also our Navy and Air Force counterparts, through our contributions to the war effort, played our part in the resistance that occurred all those years ago. Now there's no single document that spells out how many people were killed as a result of Nazi genocidal policies. Historians and other scholars have arrived at the figure of six million Jews, millions of Polish and Soviet Union citizens, hundreds of thousands of Roma and Sinti people, hundreds of thousands of disabled people living in institutions, and tens of thousands of so-called asocials, including homosexuals. Beyond these figures are, of course, those many millions, military and civilian, who also suffered during the Second World War, including some 12,000 members of the New Zealand Armed Forces who died during that conflict in the service of our nation. Now, although New Zealand was aware of the Kristall Marx pogrom of Jews in November 1938, and news about mass extermination of Jews and death camps started coming through in 1942, it was only in 1945 that Kiwi soldiers came face to face with direct evidence of the Holocaust. This occurred on the 2nd of May 1945 when elements of the 2nd New Zealand Division captured Trieste in northern Italy and found the Nazi concentration and death camp called Riziera di San Saba that Deb referred to. Private Tahu Hopkinson of 28 Maori Battalion wrote that the camp had been abandoned and all that remained were the crematoria, ashes of the dead, and a long, narrow building fitted out with a gas chamber with showers and small wooden torture cages. And it's great that Tahu's, Tahu's uh, daughter is speaking here today also. Later in 1945, in May, New Zealand Army officer Major S.J. Wilson wrote a powerful and disturbingly graphic first-hand account of what he witnessed on entering Bergen-Belsen and his interactions with survivors. I spoke with one or two 
who with tears in their eyes tried to tell me of their sufferings and showed me their arms where the prison numbers had been tattooed into the skin. The faces of young boys and girls, which should be clear and happy, are shriveled up and wrinkled like those of old men and women. I have seen just how low human beings can sink. This is just a little bit of balsam. Famously, when the, New when the US Army entered Orhadorf camp in Germany, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, later the President of the United States, visited Belsen and asked for US lawmakers and journalists to be sent to Europe to view the atrocities of the Holocaust. He wrote, I made the visit deliberately in order to be in a position to give first-hand evidence of these things. If ever, in the future, there develops a tendency to charge these allegations merely to propaganda. And we have indeed seen, and Deb referred to, Holocaust denial developed since 1945, sadly, even here in New Zealand. So our army fought in World War II as part of the Allied forces to achieve world and New Zealand security against the threat of conquest and submission to the ideologies of Nazism and fascism. It was basic to the traditional values of our armed forces to resist those evils, which were unprecedented at the time, but regrettably have occurred far too often in far too many countries since. This contribution to the ending of the Second World War, and therefore the Holocaust, is the resistance that I spoke to at the start of my speech. A resistance recently highlighted when Robert Gillies, or BOM as he prefers to be known, was awarded the knighthood in the latest New Year's Honours. BOM is the last survivor of the 28th Maori Battalion, which, as I've already described, was present and active at the capture of Trieste in 1945. The New, New Zealand Jewish Council has publicly thanked BOM and the Maori Battalion for their contribution to the end of Hitler's tyranny in making the world a better place, particularly to the Jewish people. 28th Maori Battalion was, of course, one of a number of New Zealand Army units to play their part at Trieste. Today's Army maintains the spirit of resistance to forces of aggression and disruption by playing an ongoing role in international security and peacekeeping efforts. Our personnel have either recently served or continue to serve in places such as Timor-Leste, Afghanistan, Iraq, Sudan and the Sinai. The spirit of resistance, exemplified by our forebears, our tapuna, in the fight against Hitler, guides the soldiers of today. We serve knowing that tyranny must be stood up to and we remain ready to deploy when the government directs to protect those who cannot protect themselves. The resistance New Zealand exemplified when it stood against Hitler's tyranny all those years ago is today reflected in the culture of our modern army, Ngāti Tumatawinga. It is encapsulated in our core values of courage, commitment, comradeship and integrity, and our commanders and soldiers alike are taught, trained and tested against these values so we remain vigilant and capable of action against such threats in the future. Remembering the Holocaust is therefore important for New Zealand and equally so for your Defence Force. What we stood against and the values we stood for in 1945 remain relevant today as a critical part of not only our national whakapapa and our collective international memory, but also who we are as your army. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa.